I'm Victor Kempenaert, we're in Spain and I invited the guys from Precision Fuel and Hydration to follow me during my off-season training days. I go out now on the time trial bike. To be fast on the time trial bike, the most important thing I would say is to ride on that bike a lot. For me, when I was a very good time trialist, the main uh, thing I did different than others that I would, with my hand on my heart, I would say I did double the hours on the time trial bike than other good time trialists at that moment. So riding a lot on the bike is important, but you have to ride in a position that you don't just find like this but you do proper testing proper wind tunnel or track testing the body is very adaptive if you find a very fast position that is not comfortable but when you do it like 15 hours a week it will get comfortable uh, with time i started using laces for yeah. time trials because it's more aerodynamic the main reason why i know a rider wants to use laces in a race is because they're afraid um, you can tighten them during yeah. the race, and that's true. Uh, but because the pressure is so equal over the shoe, uh, there's no need to. How's that? How's the session? I have like a section that I do. It's a bit more relaxed than always on time. That is about 10 minutes that I push like uh, medium power. It's like uh, 280 to 300 watts. In the morning I did a harder session with a lot of building up of lactate and in the afternoon I want to do this like um, high aerobic uh, pace to actively recover the, the lactate. I build it up and um, it was a successful session. Now I take a shower and I'll have some dinner. It will be quite brutal for those days, even the time trial. Um, I, w I was a bit afraid that it would be some one of a climbing time trial and that I heard it was on the boulevard. And I thought, oh, maybe um, I can do a post that. BANG! Not super smooth, but yeah. <laughs> she, she, she gets what. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So day two, it's about three hours on the road bike. Uh, this afternoon we go for a hike, easy ride. We go up a nice summit, Puerto del Sol. I'll show you how I prepare in my bottles. We're very happy that the precision fuel made for the team these bags that are just the perfect amount for five liters and I'll just show you how quickly it's done. So like this I'm good for two, maybe three days of training. Very easy. You also can do it without a blender. But then you need more horsepower. It's a 70k ride, will take long, about 3 hours, because it's hilly. Um, that's it, let's go. Yeah, I am a smart mouth. How do you think I wonder where I am, who I am by now? Just another minute till we sit to sign off, so if you know with Pips is out, he's just started his easy ride. Always a little bit stressful for us, trying to catch him. <laughs> Very interesting this morning, watching his pre-ride warm-up routine. This isn't a guy who just kind of rolls out of bed, throws on his shoes and gets out the door. He's got a lot of core stability exercises and activation exercises that he does. And he was telling us he does them every day. Uh, 
he had a nasty back injury last year where he crashed and actually um, fractured one of his vertebrae. So I think that he, he now has to do some sort of daily prehab type work to make sure that his core's staying strong so that he doesn't get back pain. Um, but like, as, as we're sort of learning with Victor, in the way he approaches everything, it's extremely um, dedicated and professional in the way that he does it. And he, even though he admitted this morning he doesn't really like doing his core stability training, it's still something he makes time to do every single day before he rides. Would you swap it for the Belgian training roads? Yeah. So today is an easy ride, about 3 hours, keep the fueling quite low, at about um, 60 grams an hour, 60 to 70 grams, um, for me that's quite low, some athletes will say that's uh, high carb. <laughs> I prefer when it's easy to have the juice, they have more taste to it than the gels, gels is more real performance, but gel is more easy to take when you're suffering, the chew um, is more like a a uh, nice moment to look forward to. When I would go harder, I would fuel up to 130, sometimes 140 grams to really push it with all these carbohydrates. You also can produce a lot of lactates. Um, people think as lactates uh, as a bad thing. In training it's uh, a really good thing actually to have a lot of lactate because when there's a lot of lactate, there's also a lot of opportunity for your body to aerobically burn that lactate. Um, and like this you boost your VO2 max. A lot of sugars makes you uh, able to produce a lot of power. It's like a car, it runs on fuel. And when you have no fuel, it stops. Only very recently, since I have those, that I'm listening to uh, music on training that when I have somewhat of a harder workout I might listen to house and stuff like this which I've never ever did before in my life I think my Spotify was a bit shocked when I started listening to that kind of music Descending can be tricky. Nowadays it's way more easy with uh, your equipment to make it feel comfortable. When you take wide tires, you put in low pressure, like this you filter bumpy bumps out of the roads. That's an uh, important thing to do to ride with the, with the right pressure. Reading the roads, very important. Start outside of the corner, go to the apex, again to the outside, like this. You make a sharp corner, wider. Try not to be too stiff on the bike because when you're stiff anything will will be stiff and you're also most likely hanging on your front wheel you want your weight to be divided as good as possible on your back and on your front wheel don't sit too much in the saddle wait on the outside pedal and on the inside arm that's how you go in the corner look where you're going when I'm in a technical descent I like to like sing a song to myself and uh, be a bit relaxed. Thinking having? about lunch? Yeah, what are we oh. having? Uh, what are we having? Just uh, the same as yesterday. <laughs> some uh, bread with some hummus and stuff. Maybe some Nutella? <laughs> yes. So that was it for the bike today. Now we have some lunch and then we go for a nice hike. I hope I can uh, keep up with you, with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> there are easy rides like today, but instead of riding five hours today, we ride three hours and we go for a two hour hike. But when, let's say halfway December, it's about getting the hours in on the bike. And uh, as said before, there's no secret to riding hard on the bike. Uh, it's riding a lot on the bike makes you ride hard. So 
Shall we think uh, some gels? Yeah. Some gels and some shoes, I reckon. Yeah. So now we go, I think it is like close to 1000 delta cubic meters, something like that. We are uh, with two, 2.6 kilometers along the track, so like a quarter of the total distance, probably half that, half of the climbing, I think. So half of the, yeah, yeah, half the yeah. Nice. So far, so good. Mm -hmm. Up here, it's been nice. My reward is half a chew. <laughs> it's quite cold, but when you walk, you easily sweat because on the cl uh, when you're riding uphill with the bike, you're not going fast, but still somewhat fast compared to walking. Back at the start. Oh, look at that. Move goal achieved. I passed my move goal with that, yeah. <laughs> according to Apple anyway. Victor, when you do a day in the off season like that, where you ride in the morning, you hike in the afternoon, I, I presume a lot of the time you're measuring your like overall training stress, and it's quite easy to do that on the bike. How do you quantify your training stress or something like that? Is it just guesswork, or is there any metrics? Yeah, I would say it's more guesswork. I don't really have data of it. Of course, yeah. I upload my file uh, on my Training Peaks account, um, but to have like the performance management chart with the TSS scores and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really fit in there. No. If if I would do something um, when I'm more like in January, I would give estimated TSS scores to my if I do a long core workout or stuff like that. Yeah. To make it all fit in properly and that you have some kind of an estimation of your uh, chronic training mode. Yeah. But now at this time I don't uh, don't really care too much. If I would have done a six hour ride with, uh, I don't know, uh, two climbs at around 400 watts, I would uh, wake up easily tomorrow. Yeah. Um, after this two hour hike, I would, um, I will feel my legs when I get out of bed tomorrow. Today is uh, the ra day three of the precision guys in Spain and um, yesterday I got my ass kicked in a, in a hike, not really kicked but I, uh, no, you I guys don't. made me sweat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw you right now at a swimming session this morning so you have a plan for us, yeah? The plan will be to, to, to get as fresh as possible to the to the small race we do, 50 meters freestyle race. Will you break but 30 seconds today? It depends if we start out of the water or do we start from the starting. Oh, okay, in the water. I reckon we do an in the water start. Yeah. I think that's Safety. in your in your uh, advantage. Yeah, that's why I'm <laughs> suggesting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think it will be somewhere around 30 seconds. Then. Yeah. This could be close, Victor. <laughs> And I said earlier, you have a reputation for competitiveness. <laughs> you need more time in your speedos, Victor. Get that town line evened out. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. 
see what happened at the turn. There's a lot of splash. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Camp and Arch for the win. Oh. At least it was close. Oh, one second, one second. I need one week recovery. One second. We just learned Camp and Arch can still swim. For 50 meters. For 50 meters at least. So it's 31.47, is that one? So that was you finishing after I smoked my cigarettes. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's. It's not about the time, it's about the results, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We just got to the physio clinic training centre where Victor's going to do his prehab type session. I'd initially thought that he was going to have massage and maybe some light mobility and that, but it does sound like it's going to be almost a little bit more like cross training, like a, a sort of um, coordination, strength and speed type workout. So I think it could be quite dynamic. Cycling is very like a small range of motion you have and when I'm going into the season, when the races are coming, I will be focusing on that small range of motion because in that small range of motion that's where the on the short term you will actually make benefit. This is more like long term, um, I'm somewhat older but still I hope to have a, a career that's not ending uh, this year. If you keep on sitting always forward in the bike, uh, keep on making those hip extensions, short, extension, extensions shorter, keeping always this back like this, you won't last super long. And today was more like coordination, uh, some speed work, which I'm actually very bad at in the coordination, like the color team, which is nowadays quite popular. I'm very bad at that and that's, you know, in the peloton you have to react often very fast and that's highly cor correlated with that. Um, and then just try to use different um, muscles in the body or the same muscles you use on the bike, but in total different angles to create that range of motion and you work in the smaller range of motion, you're way in your comfort zone. It's this smaller range of motion, if you keep on working it in this, this also becomes your limit and you're actually riding on your limit all the time. Victor, it's been a great three days. Thank you for having us. Um, we've got to get back to the airport, so do you right to get a taxi from here? Uh, I'll run like yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> good stuff. Good. See Enjoy you. the good weather in the UK. Yeah. And, uh, I'll do the same here. Yeah. We'll see you in the season, mate. Okay. Enjoy. Thanks Enjoy. for having us. Have a good Bye flight. Mate. Yeah. Ah! Oh. Oh, we ruined it. <laughs> Victor says, bring, bring your camel kit, Dave, we'll just go for a hike. <laughs> oh my God, Victor Camponarts is so good at swimming. He's actually, despite what he says, really quite an adept runner and we know what he can do on the bike so if he decides at any point in the future to sack in the cycling and take on triathlon then there's a lot of triathletes out there got to be worried because I think that bloke could, could do some damage so triathletes beware I reckon Victor Martin Campanarts might be coming for you in the future.